Good evening, ladies as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more Hearthstone Arena. Playing a bit of a greedy shaman deck with perhaps too many expensive cards. And perhaps too many two drops. But we'll see. The first two wins were alright. Nothing outstanding, but I did win. So uh, hopefully this makes it to, what, at least five? And then I'll be pretty happy. Uh, it's Sunday when I'm posting this, so... Last chance to play the Brawl for this week. I know, that's like the most irrelevant thing to say, because like, you know, within five hours from now, that all these statements are going to be totally pointless, because the Brawl will be over, but whatever. We'll talk about it anyway, because who cares. We're up against Paddy... Habington? Habington, the weirdly British Paladin. Yeah, so the Brawl this week was the um, seven random class spells. Everything else is unstable portal Brawl. My craziest win was definitely when I was playing as... Oh, who was I playing as? I was Shaman, and I was up against a mage who was just crushing me. She had the perfect answer to everything. I played a four toughness early thing. She had the flame cannon. I played a Nefarian. She had polymorph. So it was just kind of tough and sad. But I did get an Ironbark Protector. So on turn eight, I played Ironbark Protector with Frost Nova from Nefarian. And that froze her team, I crossed my fingers, she played like four unstable portals, didn't get any heals or any taunts or any removal. So the following turn I played a Bloodlust plus Wind Fury, and I killed her. I hit her for exactly 22 damage with the Iron Bark, and that's exactly how much health she had, and then I won, it was great. Good story, Boris, good story. Alright, we're up against uh, Paladin, got a Noitron. I'm really regretting this Wolf Rider choice over the Spider Tank. So unless he plays a 3-3, and I'm like really excited to kill it. I would rather just have a spider tank. Now, this guy's broken as hell. He'll be coming down on turn four, so I really just gotta make sure I got something good to play turn three. Oh, no, please don't hit this three times. Okay, thanks. Once is pretty bad anyway. Damn. Alright, well, okay, so we'll do this. Three drop killing a two drop that also got rid of a damage in my divine shield, so that sucks. He's got five cards to my five. He's got the play. Now, I do have two big minions. No, I don't. Oh, God, I don't. This is Overload, so I can't play this the following turn. Ah, oh, jeez. Alright, do I play this? 50-50 chance that it's big enough to kill this thing, and then I can't play this the following turn? I think I gotta try it. Come on, come on, get at least five. Gotta be fucking kidding me. Alright, actually that wasn't 50, that was a 75% chance. Right, 75% chance, and then anyway, it doesn't matter because I whiffed it. So this guy hopefully hits my Annoyatron, drops down to four health, and I can finish it off. Then I can play this for a card. I'm so behind, this is this is not a good start. I had a Wolf Rider for my... You know, if I'd played a Noyotron first instead of the Geomancer, the Wolf Rider couldn't have killed it. Could have been a totally different game. Oh, man. But did he have the Mad Bomber in his opening hand? If he did, he could have just played it then. Same stuff would have happened. Hmm. Butts with cheese. We got cheese... We got cheese butts over here. Oh, he's got a 5-drop. This will not handle most 5-drops. Oh, well, this will kill a 4-drop. That's good. So, now... I don't think I can afford to play this thing. I, 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 gotta, I gotta go for maximum board presence here. 3-4, of course, is better to kill than a 2-4. Gotta go for the maximum presence. So the 3 health is good. Hope he doesn't have any Hammers of Wrath. This guy does not quite kill the mechanic, which is a problem, potentially. I don't think I have any spells I can target this with. I don't think I took Wind Fury or anything, did I? I don't think I did. So I'm going to play this next one, which is great, but he has a six-mana turn with a full hand of cards. It's looking grim. I say he's got the advantage here. I pretty much have to hope his cards are total trash. All right. So he kills off the 4-3. And then my dragon is just going to, what, kill Mr. Bitey and then die to the weapon? It's looking, looking ugly. He's not even running. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So should I play Stormforge Dax? Or the Knight? I think we're going to go for this. I need to kill off his crap. I need to kill off his crap. Always draw cards first, so I didn't. Whoops. All right, we got six mana next turn. I will be able to play this guy. His weapon kills this. Or this, actually. He might prefer to kill this, and then these guys can kill this. So he has a board clear for zero mana. He gets to play whatever he wants for seven. This will die to my commander, so that's good. Please don't have to play a taunt. Don't play a taunt. Taunt, don't play. No taunt. Demolisher. So he's going for it. He's going to kill this and let his guys kill off my uh, sorcerer, which is a damned shame. 
Alrighty. Do this. Which of these do I kill? I think, weirdly enough, I gotta kill this one. Because if I kill this, there's a 50-50 chance the Demolisher kills this and lives. Whereas if I do this, I'm set to trade. Now, obviously, if he gets rid of this with Hammer or something, Stormpike Commando or his own Argent Commander or something, then I'm gonna regret not killing the bigger creature. But, you know, when you're behind, take rest. Oh, God, please don't kill this thing. Okay, thank you. That was good. That's the second Mad Bomber this guy's played. He deserves to lose just for that. Oh, come on! Oh, man. Damn everything to hell. Okay, well, butts. That's all I gotta say to that. I ain't got nothing more to say than butts. So we're gonna go pretty low on health here. Definitely gonna play this. Definitely gonna do this. Going even lower on health. Now I can give this thing taunt. Or I can crackle that thing. I'm gonna actually crackle this thing. And it, of course, did minimum damage, so thankfully it didn't matter. So this guy holds up against the recruit plus the weapon. I hope he plays something huge, like a force tank max. And I can hex it and catch back up. No! Oh, come on! Ouch. So I'm getting really low on health. He's less five mana to work with. Alright. What's he got for five? Mechanic Drake. Well, that's all right. It'll at least kill off his recruit. Wait, no, this isn't the hungry thing. Is this this thing? Oh shit, that's just not even good. Okay, well, let's do this. I'm gonna kill the recruit, then hex this thing, then I'm gonna play this and this. I'm past the turn. Now I could have played this thing and gotten a six-four, but this gives me um total of 10 stat points, which is the same as a 6-4, but it's spread out, which is better because of his recruits. I wanted to kill the, the thing I did. Are you, are you fucking kidding me? Oh, man. Stampeding Kodo, seriously. Ugh. <sighs> well, that's looking bad. So he's got a board of 1-1s. One I did not get a lightning storm. One of the weaknesses of Shaman. No basic mass removal and of course the mistake is now this thing has to be a 3-5 because I can't afford to just sit around and do nothing um should I play a lightning bolt against this there's really no point well it's pretty much over he's got the first top deck his his hero ability is better than mine he's got the health advantage and the board advantage I have to top deck out of this insanely well in order to have any hope whatsoever of winning Also, I'm about to be burned out. He's got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine damage. Which isn't good for my interests. Alright. Well, Taunt is actually really good with... That was, that was a lucky flip. That could keep me going for a few turns. Because this stands up to all of his crap. If this were any other totem, he could just hit me in the face for two, three, four, five, six. Eventually another two. That's eight. And I'd be really screwed. So what did he get off the top? It has to be something bad. It's actually not that good. Okay, I have a chance. There's a small chance here that I can make it. Really, really small. Is he going to kill my stuff? He needs to go for the face, and I think he realizes this. He needs to just go full face and try to burn me out, because I can only kill two of his things. Yeah, he played it, he played it smart. So he's got four damage here. Unless I get another taunt totem, I'm in a lot of trouble. All right, well, lightning doesn't strike twice. So I can get rid of some of his damage. Unfortunately, I have to give him a card in the process. So he's going to take me down to two health. If he, uh, he's got two cards that he needs to deal two damage with, so there's a lot of chances to win right there. Solemn Vigil for two extra cards. It's very smart. All he needs to do is take deal two damage to me, and he got a juggler. Okay, so if any knifelings go to my face, I'm in a lot of trouble. Oh, geez, that's actually a lot of knifelings. Alright, that's one on the face, he needs one more on the face, didn't get it, but he has the weapon, so he actually does have the win, only one needed to hit my face. Well, that was close, considering how close that was, I'm gonna go ahead and give that rating a bullshit factor of 519,000, because just a little bit more going my way would have been enough, like him not having a Kodo. But maybe if I had played Faces Manipulator to copy his 6-4, his Kodo would have been useless that particular turn or just sat in his hand, maybe he would have played it just because he had nothing else to play. Then I could have played my stuff, given my 6-4 taunt with my Sunfury Protector. Maybe I actually could have won. 
Well, that sucks. So we're up against the hunter here, Kaz the hunter. So do you keep a I just hate keeping lightning bolt. You never really feel good playing it. Obviously a rock biter is an easy keep. But the more I play with Lightning Bolt, the more I actually don't like that card. Rather, it just costs two mana and deal three damage, like, you know, every other removal card that other classes have. Alright, we got our Stormforge Dax. And our Hex. So we're ready to remove things, but if he plays two threes, I could actually be in trouble. Hex isn't good for a while. So I play this, then I have to Totem on turn three. Oh no. Alright. I gotta think very carefully here. I'm actually gonna do this. Because if I play the Tron right now and I play this turn 3, I can't play this on turn 4. I really want to play this on turn 4 because I'm a little bit slow here. Now this gives away that I have 2 damage, but that's fine. What does he have here? Alright, I hope it's not the pig. Yeah, he got the pig. Now you might say, Pop Wars, why are you hoping it's not the pig? You can kill the pig. But the thing is, it's actually a lot of damage. that I'm just, I just took 8 damage versus a hunter. So I think that, you know, that's not exactly the most comfortable shape to be in. I just up a card for 8 damage. <laughs> Mom's back end was so disappointed with that play, they were like, fuck it, I, I can't even watch this anymore. Oh no, they're back, hey. Thanks, Mom's back end. Thanks for sticking with me in spite of my crazy decisions. Is there an anti bot in this deck? God, I wish I could remember. Well, find out, I suppose. He actually passes turn 3, so he's, I think... If I'm not mistaken, committed to a full burn strategy here. With that plan, I mean, I, I maybe he had some subpar. Three drops, so please, can I get something more than four? Oh, thank you, that's so nice. Now, just as long as the opponent doesn't have a uh, big game hunter, in which case, again, it'll be the 25% that was the worst possible. Unfortunately, thanks to this overload, I cannot copy my 7-6 or play my other 7-6. I will have to uh, totem which is a bit sad, or use an aggressive hex. Maybe I will just hex and try to burn him out. I mean, a one hit to the face with this guy and we're tied on health. Then I got a couple more of seven sixes in my hand. I could try to burn him out. We'll see, I think that's what I'm gonna try. Ogre man. all right, so do we go for the aggressive hex? Oh, all these five drops are just making me sad. I could just kill this thing with my 7-6, make a totem, play, just calm, normal Hearthstone. But I'm going to go for it. I think this is my best chance of winning, is to deal seven damage right there. I got an Owl, in case he plays Taunts. No Hunter removal can pretty much touch this, except for Hunter's Mark and something else. Okay, he's got the Hunter's Mark, which just top-decked. And he's got an arcane shot. Alright, he's two for one there. Which sucks. And he's got a Yeti, but the Annoyatron holds up against the Yeti. Do I play this guy? I don't think that's smart. I think what makes much more sense is to play this and a totem. Hit him in his face. Ah, man, he top decked Hunter's Mark. I think that could have cost me the game, because he clearly had nothing else he could do. If I had hit his guy, then Arcane Shot would have finished mine off, so if he hadn't topped the Thunder's Mark, my 7-6 would have lived. I could have kept on hitting him in one, but now, by the time I can play this, I might be too far behind. Slug Belcher. Well, it's a good thing I saved my owl. Alright, so we... Wait, do I want to copy this thing? I could copy it. Take a defensive stance. You know what? I'm going to try this. And then I'm going to copy this thing. Then I'm going to silence it. And then I'm going to hit him in the face. No reason to use the weapon just yet. I think they can hang on to that just in case of desperate times. So my goal is put a lot of pressure out and then drop this thing and win. That's the plan. Alright, what the hell is that? Probably explosive trap, I'm guessing. So I want to attack minions with these guys. Eagle Horn Bow is unfortunate to, to see. And a Hyena. Hmm. Well, he has no beast, so this is just a 2 2. The bow actually is not that bad. What am I talking about? He takes damage by using the bow. I'm okay with it. I am totally okay with it. He's gonna use that. That's very aggressive. He should really have hit it with the Yeti. The Yeti would have lived. This, that way he would have taken 2 less damage. Oh, he wants to kill that. Alright, fair enough. Well. 
let's see here. Since I think it's an explosive trap, I'm gonna check like this. Ah, oh, it's a freezing trap or snake trap. Okay, so he gave me my owl again, which I'm pretty okay with. And now, let's think. I got two, five, eight, nine damage. Hmm. Or I could hedge my bets. So let's see. Three, four, six, nine damage. And then I'm threatening the win with this. I'm gonna do it. You might say, but Papa Boris, that's kinda crazy. You could just kill his stuff and you've got card advantage. And that's true, but I don't think he can kill me this turn. So I'm willing to just put it all out there. Okay, let me let me hedge my bet in this one regard. I'm going to kill that sludge belcher. But now this guy is threatening lethal. He didn't have any removal a few turns ago. This thing and this thing also threatened lethal. Oh god, he has a heal bot. Well, that's most of his most of his mana for the turn. Let's see. He can kill this and he can kill this, but he can't kill this thing without hitting himself. Let's see. He kills the wolf rider and then he's got 10 damage coming his way down to 3 health. I think I'm okay with this. Or am I? Then he's got 7, 9, 12, 14 damage. Shoot. Uh, no, but the Yeti dies, killing the Wolf Rider. Right. Okay, he actually decides to hit my Spell Totem. He has to kill the Wolf Rider, so his Yeti goes down. So he's got 3, 6, 8, 10 damage. Hmm. Well, Fork Lightning is a nice find, because this allows me to kill off one of his creatures. Let's see. I'm just going to play this. Fork Lightning. Take off two damage. So now he's got three, six, eight damage. He steals seven damage with three cards. It's a little bit tough. Seven's harder than five. Five, you do like a kill command and a beast or wolf rider and any sort of two damage, but seven is a little bit tricky. I feel like my chances are pretty good that I can just burn him out. Maybe I played this more riskily than I needed to, but I think that it was it was the right call. I think if he, if I'd let him catch up, I could have lost. Man, that Hunter's Mark top decked really made this much harder. Because if I just could have kept whacking them with that 7-6, it would have done definitely been a much easier game. That f Fire Guard, Destroyer, whatever, almost single-handedly won this for me. That's a pretty good card. Although I did suffer for the Overload. I had three 5-drops I wanted to play on turn 5 when I had one Overloaded Crystal. Alright, he's going to Quick Shot. That's 4 damage. But can his other thing deal 3 damage? Oh, he has, he has this little Steady Shot, so yeah, he's screwed. Alright, I think I made a deliberate choice to go in for this, and I think it ended up being the right thing. So, that, as they say, is that. Kachonkity donkity. Mr. Splonkity. Oh, he's gonna take the rope down? What? What? What an ass. Taking the rope is so unnecessary. Alright, well, if we're gonna be unnecessary. Uh, okay. Bonk. Oh, I could have made a totem. Oh, I forgot to make a totem. Damn. Really just too bad. Okay. Cool beans, beauty queens. We're up to three wins. Oh yeah, let me look. Do I have an antique kill bot? I do not. I have a bloodlust, that's what I have. Okay. So good to know I have zero healing in the deck. Do you guys know that the arena lets you build a deck from random cards? Yeah, they're totally random and you can win prizes also. It's awesome. Love those tips. Lots of extra value added to the game from those tips. They probably shouldn't put that particular tip in the arena, though. I think people already know about that if they're in the arena. Anyway, we're up against the mage, of course. Frost, the cleverly, but I have to admit, appropriately, named mage. We've got a four drop that's pretty good. Unfortunately, I don't think I can keep it. Because I have to mulligan this, and I don't think it's good to keep a four drop, no matter how tempting it is, if you have nothing else playable. Hip, hip, beep, beep. Okay, we got a pair of two drops. I will be coining them out back to back. This one first. It doesn't hit as hard, but it's resistant to the Frostbolt and the Flamethrower. Oh, come on. Oh, fine. I'll still do this. This just dies to anything under the Mana Worm. Starts to take over. God, I hate seeing turn one Mana Worm. 
feel good about life, and then suddenly you don't. She could run in and ping this, but that would be dumb, because then the two spiders that come out could kill the worm. So if she doesn't want to do that, she wants to hit my face. Alright, at least she didn't have another 2-drop. That's good. Or not another, but a 2-drop. So that's something. Next, let's play the Raider. And I do want to attack the Mana Worm with my spiders. reason for that is I want this Mana Worm to be at 2 health, so it's ready to die to the Raider. Now, thanks to my spiders, I'm a little bit safe against Flame Cannon, but Frostbolt still wrecks my creature. Turn 3 is awkward. I got nothing to do except make a totem. Flame Wanker. Oh, God, that's almost worth hexing. Oh, that's a bit of an aggressive hex. But I'm going to do it. This does put me in a pretty good position. If you just ignore the psychologically unpleasant fact that Hex can be used on much stronger minions, I used a 3-mana removal for a 3-mana minion, and, you know, it was good. Alright, we got the thing. It's really dumb, but... Well, okay, so I can kill it with the axe. I can go 2, 4, 5, 6. Or we could do this, which is a little bit greedy, but it allows me to get cards even though it doesn't kill my opponent's creature. The Cult Master herself, itself, whatever the hell the Cult Master is, can be used to finish this thing off. Now, do I want to trade this for a card? Nope, I don't. I think the board presence is more important than the card here. Because right now she really wants to kill my Cult Master with this to stop these things from giving me three extra cards. I've got Spectral Knight, which is pretty good and pretty big card advantage. I'm liking the situation here. Now she's going to use the dragon to kill my cult master. I only have four damage, so I can't quite kill the shield engine. I could play Stormforged Axe and then kill it. However, then I don't play anything else. So I'm going to leave this engine alone and then play the Spectral Knight. I don't think it's worth playing this to get a three or a five mana engine. I don't. Yeah, I just don't think that's quite worth it. Yeah, let's just let's just start the party here. The party of good times. So she kills anything with this engine. My Spectral Knight kills it. Or no, never mind. She kills this with the Senj, and I reckon. And then my Fire Elemental kills this. Then I have 4, 5, 6 damage for free on the table. Or 4, 5 damage if she pings a thing. What she needs here is just a big 6 drop. That's pretty much what she needs. Because I've got really huge minions, but not necessarily great ways to answer her stuff, because I used up my Hex. So if she can get a really nice minion, then I'll be in trouble. Doomsayer, huh? Well, I gotta hand it to her, that's really irritating. Because if I fire elemental this, I only have four, five, six, not quite seven damage. Um but if I play this, same deal. Because I have to waste the damage against this engine. Hmm. Um well, let's think here carefully. If I fire elemental there, that leaves it with four health, but then these two things don't quite kill off this engine. Oh, that's so frustrating. All right, if I lightning bolt this and stormforge Jax, I can kill that thing. Unfortunately, that's three mana, leaving me with nothing else. But if I stormforge Jax and hit hit, that's only five damage, can't kill it. So is it worth trying to play around this thing? No, it's actually not worth it at all to play around that thing. What I am gonna do here is make a little bit of a tech play. I am going to copy her shredder. I'm such a techie. Then I'm going to lightning bolt that shredder so it pops out. So that thing will die. I'm going to get two damage in. And then the doomsayer pops, everything dies. I have a creature out. She's got four cards to my five, soon to be six. I do have answers to what she might play. And I think I'm just going to win with card advantage. I think that was the best strategy I had. Now, this happens to be a particularly good Shredder drop because it gives me two extra damage, so I can deal up to six damage. So what she needs here is a Boulder Fist Ogre or a War Golem because that has more health than I can deal. She doesn't have it, though. She also doesn't have a Kodo. She actually passes the turn. Okay, what the fuck does that mean? She passed the turn. All right. I'm going to play the Knight. She passed the turn. 
It means that she has a fistful of removal spells, and this is the thing I have that is most resistant to removal. It can't be targeted by Fireball, Polymorph, it survives Flame, Strike, and Blizzard. I think she's got she's got to have a fistful of removal, or else why would she play nothing on turn 7? Flame Cannon? Oh, that's annoying. And an Argent Commander. Why didn't she play Argent Commander? That was weird. Okay, whatever. So I guess she doesn't have a handful of removal, she's just bad at Hearthstone. Okay, well, let's play Fire Elemental then. Kill that. Hit this. Uh, do I want to play this thing? Nope, I'm going to make a Totem. I still think she might have, like, a Flame Strike in there. And now at 9 minutes she can Flame Strike and ping. So there's no reason to run into that by playing this extra thing. She's got a copy. Ah, that would explain it. She had nothing to copy with it. Alright, makes sense, makes sense. Okay, I could run in and earth shock that. I could run in and storm for Dax. Hmm. Um I'm not gonna be greedy here. Let's just do this. Make another totem. I think the slow way is the way to go here. I've got a massive card lead and a lot of health. Make her come up with something. And then if I can just trade one for one, I win. Alright, Frostbolt, I'm delighted to see that because it's one for one trade. It's exactly the thing I want to see. Boulderfist Ogre. Okay, so we're going to have to trade my Ventrico Mercenary for that Ogre. Unfortunately. But the Taunt Totem is nice. Oh, man, that's really good. Uh, yeah. So we're going to play this. And then Hex that. Make the Axe. And kill the Frog. This is a pretty good situation, so now she has to have an answer for this. Or it's going to kill her in three turns, roughly. This thing is going to add some extra pressure as well. I can get past taunts with my earth shock. Water elemental. Oh man. Lame. All right. So, let's see. Earth shock or owl. Let's go for the owl here. Make another totem and hit her in the face. Wow. To stop this, she has to run her earth water elemental at it, which will kill the water elemental. Oh, she's not going to do that. She's using the sludge belcher. For what purpose? The recombobulator gives another 5 drop. Smart. She got a 5-5 five five out of the deal. Not bad. And she's pinging this, so it'll die to the 5-5. Five five. All very smart. Sun Fury Protector, huh? Alright, let's play the game. Let's do this. Give the crappy things taunt. Hit that thing and kill it. And hit her in the face. So now I'm threatening lethal with this plus my axe. I have two taunters to stop these two creatures. So she has to top deck an answer for the Ventrical Mercenary or she loses. Flame Strike would be a good top deck here. Let her clear my board and then she'd still have a bunch of stuff. But nope, she doesn't have Flame Strike. Does she have any way to kill that Ventrico? She does not. Alright. Good times. Maybe I was unnecessarily risky again in that game. I don't know. It's possible that I didn't play that game strategically perfectly, but whatever. It's over now, so here we go. Four wins and one loss. One more win, and I will reach the completely arbitrary goal that I set for myself. Got a lot of gold here from playing Tavern Brawl and making my dailies. If I keep playing Tavern Brawl at this rate, getting up to 20,000 is actually not impossible. Drew know the Paladin. Hey man, Drew know that bicycling is good for your health? Uh, yeah, I heard it on NPR. Mm, it's really good. Oh, wow, I haven't seen that Raven Old Assassin or that Storm and Champion a whole lot. Glad, glad to have them in opening hand, though. That's exactly where I want these things. So we need to have on-point top decks. Super on-point. So, ah, oh, Jesus, freaking one-drops. 
Well, this is bad, because this does not kill zombie chow. This, well, uh, it'll kill the zombie chow, I guess, but a, a spider tank would have been better. It would also kill the zombie chow. Oh, man, are you serious? Oh, fucking Christ. So, yeah, spider tank would have been way better here. It would have traded with both of his minions. Wolf, Wolf Rider only kills one of them. Butts on a cracker. So, I'm trading a three drop for a one drop after having gone down a card. I got this, and then this is on turn five. So... Does he seriously have a dragon? He actually does. He has a fucking dragon. You gotta be kidding me. What is he doing? Oh, man. Seriously? What is happening here? Blessing of Wisdom. He's gonna get two cards off of that shit. Oh, Jesus. Wow. I am so far behind. It actually hurts to, to look at this. Well, nothing I could do except, you know, have drafted a spider tank instead of a wolf rider, which is a mistake I won't make again. So he's gonna get two cards off of this chow. And then you've got to be a... Oh. Seriously? Come on! He's going to get three cards. Did I say two cards? I meant three cards. He's going to get three cards off of this Chow. And he has a 7-7 seven, seven that I don't have either of my silences to deal with. Good. Let's play that. Hoping trade hits his 7-7. Seven, seven. I guess the perfect thing now would be for him to have an outdoor Peacekeeper. Which would make this a 1-6 with a debilitating drawback. And then I would just concede. That, as they say, would be that. Divine Shield on this wouldn't be the worst thing either. It would let him kill my guy and have a 7-7 seven, seven still. I really am just on the hair's breadth of conceding here. Wow, what an idiotic game this is sometimes. What an idiotic game. Alright, he takes the trade. And plays a Worgen. He's gonna get a third card off of Chow. That was, a, that was the best blessing of might I have ever seen. I want to crackle, but oh wait, this card fucking sucks because if I play it, I can't play either of my seven drops that I've had the whole time. And I can't play the creeper. Well, I have no choice. I need to play this, and I need to crackle. If I am going to be overloaded, I might as well get both overloads out of the way. Next turn, I can play this thing. He's gotten like four cards off of the blessing of my. Oh, really? <laughs> That's special. That's just special. Alright. I'm still in the game, but I'm way down on cards thanks to this Blessing of Wisdom, which has given him, like, four cards. Without that, I might actually be alright, if it weren't for that one freaking card. Alright, well, we finally get to kill Zombie Chow. Whoop-dee-doo! And now he's got, you know, eight cards to my four. So, this Storm and Champion's gonna have to really come in gold for me to have any chance of catching up and winning this. Oh, he's actually got the kill for my guy. You know what? I'm done here. We're done. I don't need to play this anymore. Yeah, I don't need to play this anymore. <sighs> that was one of those games where you need, like, a good-natured fuck you emote. And then even if it's not good-natured, the person won't know, because the emote is good-natured. Maybe, like, a fuck you, smiley face. Would be a good one for that one. For that kind of situation. I don't know if there's any Hearthstone deck I've ever drafted that could have stood up to that opening. Well, I guess if I'd had an Elven Archer, one of those decks, maybe I could have done it. Or an Earthshock would have done it, too. You know, things I had and didn't draw. Yup. Yup, yup, yup. Yup. Another Paladin, Lucky Owl. Well, I hope I draw my Lucky Owl at the right time. And not a moment earlier. Jeez. So, I'm gonna mulligan both of these hexes. I just need to get my creatures. I don't want to use Hex early. I'd rather just have creatures. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, no, 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 no. All right. Uh, Stormforged Axe will take care of recruits. If I'm lucky, it'll also take care of, I don't know, uh, Zombie Chow that's been inspired by Blessing of Fucking Wisdom, maybe? Oh, yeah, maybe that'll work. Mm-hmm. Okay. Glad I got that happening. Wow, two Paladins in a row with Zombie Chow both times. What are the goddamn odds? So, I think we're going to Stormforged Axe here and just kill a recruit. So, now the plan is drop an Anoyatron on turn 3 in front of this Chow. Or I could fork Lightning, although I don't exactly want to be overloaded for 2 on turn 4. I was kind of hoping to play that Cult Master. Yobin Stalker. Well, it does not die to forked Lightning. So, unless I get a Geomancer here. 
That was a hint game. As I was saying that, you were supposed to give me a Geomancer, and I could be like, wow, it actually happened, or something, but no. I also got a Geomancer there, that Fork Lightning wasn't going to do me. It's Jack, Squad, or Diddly. So now you will get to kill the Tron, but at least I get to kill off the Chow with my weapon. And... Okay, what else do I do here? Huh. I could coin into a Merc. Oh, Bloodlust, just perfect. Exactly what I wanted. Alright, fuck it, we'll just make a Totem. Hit the Stalker. And Fork Lightning. Completely nullifies anything I could do next turn. But, whatever. Let's just clear that damn board. So I'm gonna have a total of three mana. Four with the coins I could coin into a Cult Master, right into a True Silver, which is really, really good. Good to make that play. Is he actually, oh, please use it to kill my Totem. Oh my god, please. Come on, do it. Do it. Even better. Wow. Eve, is he gonna play another weapon now? Like a Cog Hammer? Is that why he's using it up? No, he's just going to play that thing. Wow, that was incredible. I am so glad that all happened. Now, again, I thanks to this overload, I cannot play any of these five drops I want to play. I'm just going to use Earthshock here. There's no rush to play Cult Master, so let's just Earthshock. Kill this thing. Hopefully get... Actually, I don't care what I get. It's all good. Yeah, everything is fine. Taunt would have blocked this off. 1-1 one, one would have traded with it. Next turn, I have six mana, so I can play the Fire Elemental. So hopefully it doesn't have anything good. And I can just fire elemental, kill it, and win the game. Winning with broken cards is more fun than a tub full of lords. All right, we got a 2-2 here. You can kill off my totem. So he's got a lot of damage on the table. He's going to have a total of three free damage. But it's not quite enough to kill the fire elemental, so I have a chance that the fire elemental will survive. And good things can still happen. All right, he's got seven cards to my... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, soon to be eight. I also have the coin still, though that's of dubious value at this point. I've got a leader on a board. Can he deal with this fire elemental? He needs two efficient damage, so like a... Oh, uh, well, that's pretty good. So he takes six damage for his troubles, but he does kill this and use the one, one. And then the two, two plus the true silver next turn give him six damage, which will kill either the spout or knight. Or the Ventricle Mercenary, which is quite annoying. Solemn Vigil. Oh, he gets up on cards, too. Alright, well, that's not looking so good. Not looking so good at all. Alright, well, we're going to play this and the Ventrico. I consider the Ventrico less valuable than the Spectre Knight, so I want this to die to the weapon and the recruit. If he peace keeps this, then I'm just screwed, but whatever. Oh god, please don't be a peacekeeper. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, so he wanted to keep his 2-2. Two -two. That's fine. So he's gonna go up a card again. 2-2! Two -two. But I'm okay with that. With luck, he'll pop open my spiders so I can play Cult Master. Ah, oh, he didn't do it. What a loser. Got my hexes, which don't do me any good. Cult Master off the coin seems pointless. Let's just totem. The 1-1 one, one I'm pretty happy about. I just want to deal some damage somewhere. So he's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 damage. Can't quite technically kill the Spectral Knight. Steezel Treader is a pretty good target for Hex. Pops the spiders. Is he going to trade his recruits for these spiders? I'm okay with that. Very okay with it. Oh, and he hits my face. Perfect. All right, so what we can do here... Ooh, interesting. Hmm, I have a lot of options now. Can I win? This is 6, plus 5 is 11. Can't win. Obviously, I want to hex this, and then how do I deal with this? Do I just run it in with my Spectra Knight? I could play the Cult Master. Silence Sneeds. And then run these at it, which achieves nothing. Okay, that's not good. I could silence this, and then trade this for it and get a card. Is that worth it? I think it's actually worth it. So what we're going to do is hex this, kill it like that, silence this, play the Cult Master, and get a card. Because I really just need some cards here. And he can't deal with the Cult Master right now. He's got six cards to my six. My threatening lethal. Let's see, he kills this, he goes to 16. 
8 plus 6 is 14. Can't quite kill him, but I got this plus level switch as a kind of a combo in two turns, which could hopefully kill him if I'm just a little bit lucky. Actually, wait, he's not going to kill this owl. What am I talking about? This this uh, cult master will give me a card, so he doesn't want to kill my owl at all. Wow, this is really shutting down minions with battle cry. Luckily, this guy does not have battle cry. Stealth is just a static ability, and he hits to the face, which is very, very reasonable. Secret. Hmm, probably Noble Sacrifice or Revenge. Alright. What do we do here? So, I want to check for Noble Sacrifice with the Owl. And I want to kill this guy. Oh, wait, I don't want these guys getting avenged. But I've got Hex, so it's fine. Yeah. Let's try this. Is it Avenge? Or redemption. It's redemption. Okay. So now what we can do is um shoot. The recruit is gonna be able to kill my cult master. Do I actually need to bother killing these damn things? Or can I just hit him in the I think I'm just gonna kill these things. That's alright. So now we can play this, and I'm actually gonna use this epic coin to play the assassin. So he's got two damage. I don't think you can deal 13 damage with four cards. That's really improbable. I've got 11 damage plus six is 17 damage. So if this thing lives, my bloodless will be for nine and I will win. Bloods and Kings doesn't matter unless he's killing me. Unless he has like some kind of like holy champion bullshit or something. This is five, nine damage. Not enough to kill me. All right, we got this. We got it. We got it down. So another game where I go a little bit low on health, but it's totally worth it. So let's see. He made the right choice, actually. He totally made the right choice. Because, look, I got 12 plus 7 is 19 damage. If I didn't have any damage in my hand, then um, I would not be I would not be able to I'd have to kill all this stuff. Luckily, Blood, this is a pretty good card. And, yes, Justice Demands Retribution. Well, that'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching, folks. I made my goal. We'll call this video Achievement. And we'll see if we can crawl up to seven in the next one. Thanks for watching. Please like and or subscribe, and we'll see you again soon. Take care.